I've been feeling kind of cooped up recently staying in the studio, so I figured we'd go out for a walk. Shan, you, you want to go out on a walk with me? Out of the box, out of the box, out of the box, out of the box. Take one box, put it with another, let's look for one that's long and wide. Too. We'll build a house together. Now what's it gonna be inside? Hmm. So I figured today we talk about a little something thematic, and we're gonna be talking about thinking outside of the box in trading card games in general. More specified for Yu-Gi-Oh! because I haven't done something like that in a while, and I know how much you guys like Yu-Gi-Oh! videos. So what exactly do I mean by this? Well, when we play in our card games, we kind of just like to stick in our bubble, whether it's with our friends group or just testing habits that we seem to have. Oh yeah, new, new toy by the way. We are rocking with now this N50 that I just got. I had a big complaint from a lot of people that um, the pops coming from my phone for the M19 pre-release. tournament. Bust open your packs, push players, pump GP. Trust me, I was well aware that was an issue. But now we finally got the budget to fix it. Now we have an external microphone and everything, so we don't have to worry about that problem anymore. So, uh, little upgrades here and there. I'm making the vlog a little bit better. A lot of people would much rather like to stay in their bubble, testing with specific friends and everything. But there's a huge plethora of opportunities to be realized if you just step outside of that comfort zone. See, a common habit that a lot of players, including myself, are guilty of is using just net decking to figure out everything for us. Because somebody's already figured out the formula, they've already figured out the most effective tactic to make the best deck. So why would we innovate? But see, that's just the problem with that, is there's a whole bunch of different techs and everything outside of your bubble if you experiment. For example, I have a hunch this new card uh, in the newest set. It has some weird name in the TCG. I forget what the hell it's called, but it's the newest secret rare that a lot of people are dismissing where you banish top three cards of your deck and then in three turns you add those cards to your hand. That just sounds insane to me. Remember, there's always somebody that has to find a tech card. Who's to say that won't be you? And who knows, maybe that tech that you use might be a hole in one or it'll just flop. Nobody really knows for sure, but it's all about that trial and error to come to a conclusion. I think those are ones you can eat? Yes. I was always told by my mom not to eat berries in the wild, no matter what they were. Where do you think real raspberries come okay, from? Okay, that's fair, but how do you know that's a good one? And something to note is that you don't even have to be very good at the game to make these decisions. Just trying these different techs and realizing for yourself what's good and bad will help you become a better player on your own. It's like the video that I did the $30 deck challenge for. When you figure out Magic Cylinder is actually a bad card, that's a huge learning curve for you as a player. So hopefully you figure that out. Hopefully you figure that out already. That's, that's kind of important. Shannon, hmm? what's your favorite card game? Go fish. I'm gonna tell you guys a story about me being a bad player and having this tunnel vision mentality uh, and not really expanding my horizons and kind of figuring out things for myself. Way back when I just started playing Yu-Gi-Oh, I thought Madolches were the cream of the crop when it comes to Yu-Gi-Oh decks. This was a time when Dragon Rulers were the best decks. Let me say it again. Dragon Rulers were at full power in this time but I thought Adolce's were better. So obviously I didn't have the right mentality when it came to these things. But the thing is, is not only did I have that mentality that this was the best deck, there was nothing to top it, and I said I hated meta, there was no reason for Dragon Wars to be heralded as good as they were, I just didn't want to learn. That's a huge mistake. I also had this idea in my head that I had recently pulled a Card Card D. Card Card D is, well, it was not awful, it's a decent card now, but back in the day, that card was kind of hype. I played this card in absolutely everything I could. It was the most expensive card in my collection and it is the card that I thought was the card to end all cards. I played this card in Medulce's. Let me tell you, you shouldn't be playing that card in Medulce's. And it wasn't until a lot later when I started playing the game a little bit more that I realized this card's definitely not as good as I think it is. I should probably cut it. If you still happen to play a card that only you think is good, but all your friends say it's a bad card, chances are it's 
it's probably a bad card. So that's just a little inside look on how bad I was at the game back then. But hopefully there's a lot you can learn from that. So moral of the story is, don't get tunnel vision because there's tons of opportunities out there in Yu-Gi-Oh! because we're allowed to use every card in the game. That's unlike any other card game. So we make that to your advantage and try to find something that people haven't quite found yet. I don't really know what was the point of this video. It's kind of just a little abstract, but hopefully you know you guys learned a little something from it. Just remember to keep being creative and you'll figure out something hopefully. It's all just progression with becoming a better player. If you guys like the video, be sure to like, comment, and definitely subscribe. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching, guys. So long, farewell to you, my friends. Goodbye for now until we meet again. I say so, so long.